bright beauty every student matters hello students this is the fourth topic of your chapter and the name of this topic is biosphere reserves students this topic this uh, biosphere reserve has been given a separate topic because it is a very important thing to understand that biosphere reserves are essential for our environment for the existence of mankind so let us start with the picture in front of you what do you notice in this picture there is a water body right there is aquatic life then there are birds in the air right there are animals living on the land there is vegetation there are animals in the ground which live under the soil then the dead remains of plants and animals then microscopic organisms basically land air this is a smaller representation or a small part of earth that is separated small part of land you can say which is separated and kept naturally no human development takes place in this area and it is left as it is the uh, creatures present in that area handle themselves how they have to live and how they have to eat so how they have to reproduce everything is left on to the animals only right there is no human involvement it is like it is the area where there is no human activity at all right biosphere reserves are the areas meant for the conservation of biodiversity now let us see what biodiversity is with the help of bio reserves biosphere reserves we are conservation we are trying to conserve the biodiversity now students in this picture you can see birds and there are many kinds of birds there are thousands and lakhs of kinds of fishes then vegetation so many trees so many animals so many animals in the ground so many microscopic organisms so the this is so much diverse that you cannot calculate right you cannot calculate by yourself this is the biodiversity now look at the picture for the biodiversity there is a bear there is a rhino there is a penguin there is a monkey or chimpanzee rainbows vegetation frog flowers spider tortoise panda mountains aquatic life rivers uh, flowers then lion or tiger and then different kinds of fish so there is so many of everything there uh, the number of animals or number of natural resources are is so large that uh, we cannot even calculate right it is so diverse our mother nature is so diverse that uh, it amazes us so this diversity of animals and plants and natural resources is known as biodiversity let us go to the definition biodiversity is the variety of plants animals and microorganisms generally found in an area basically biodiversity is the variety of plants animals and microorganisms generally found in an area all right basically in your area you can find some kind of trees some kind of rats some kind of other animals and different microorganisms and these are different for different areas for example if you go to himalayas if you go to the mountains the kind of trees present there are different they are much more longer they are much more greener right while in the normal areas and if you go to the rajasthan area there is so much of desert right so this is all of this is because of biodiversity variety of plants and animals and microorganisms generally found in an area now biosphere reserves help to maintain the biodiversity and the culture of that area so to preserve that culture to preserve that biodiversity biosphere reserves are made so that we can conserve all these in the certain areas and if and also making sure that the human activities are not disturbing the complete nature the complete environment right there are still some parts of the nature which are intact and have not received any disturbance from the human activities all right so students a biosphere reserve may also contain other protected areas in it so basically biosphere reserve is a large area as you can look at the map 
it is a very large area in which there are other protected areas also present sometimes right so the panchmani biosphere reserve this is present in the madhya pradesh of india all right it is a biosphere reserve its name is panchmani it consists of one national park named satpura the national park is satpura and two wildlife sanctuaries named bori and panchmani two wildlife sanctuaries named bori and panchmani let us look at the map now so this complete area is the map of panchmani bio reserve this is the whole large area now as you can see this area neem ghan as you can say this area is the satpura national park all right so this biosphere reserves reserve consists of one national park in it then two wildlife sanctuaries this is the bori sanctuary and this is the panchmani sanctuary the as you can look at the map the green part is bori sanctuary the blue part is satpura national park and panchmani sanctuary is the yellow part so in this picture you can say that the panchmani bio reserve contains one national park which is satpura and two wildlife sanctuaries which are bori and panchmani all right now there is an activity for you again list the factors disturbing the biodiversity in your area it can be increased population increased pollution increased deforestation basically you have to list any factors which are responsible for the disturbance in biodiversity in your area they can be different according to the areas all right now some of these factors and human activities may disturb the biodiversity unknowingly list these human activities and how can these be checked this is an activity for you so in this activity you have to list down the disturbing factors of your biodiversity which may be created by human beings unknowingly right we may be doing something unknowingly which is ultimately causing disturbance to the biodiversity and also how can we check them what are the steps that can be taken to check them this is a simple activity all right flora and fauna these terms are very common you must have heard them somewhere in your science classes right flora and fauna especially in biology students some animals and plants typically belong to a particular area basically uh, you can take the example of cactus this cactus plant is only found in desert because it requires no water because it requires very less quantity of water and can exist in heat waves basically right so it can exist in hot temperatures hot winds and it requires very less water so it grows in desert areas right so cactus is not found in mountains or in plains where there is good vegetation cactus is only found in desert area so similarly some animals and plants typically belong to a particular area the plants and animals found in a particular area are termed flora and fauna respectively for that area flora is for plants and fauna is for animals respectively of that area all right so if i can if i say that there is a kind of tree present there is a there is are four five uh, kinds of trees present in my area so that is flora of my area right and i can say that if there is one kind of cat living in my area which is only found in my area then i'll be referring to that cat as the fauna of my area right so the plants and animals found in a particular area are termed as flora and fauna respectively of that area all right now sal teak mango jamun silver ferns arjun etc are the flora are the flora of panchmani bio reserve basically look in the picture right you can see there are ferns there are different trees they have been uh, mentioned like sal teak mango jamun silver ferns arjun these are the flora of panchmani reserve basically these plants are found in panchmani reserve not everywhere 
but in that area definitely we find these kinds of plants right now chinkara blue ball barking deer cheetah leopard wild dog wolf these are the fauna of the biosphere reserve basically here we are talking about the animals and here we were talking about the plants so these are the flora and fauna of these areas all right as you can see the pictures right barking deer then wolf wild dog leopard right chinkara so these are the animals found in the panchmadi reserve and these are some of the trees found in the panchmadi reserve panchmadi biosphere reserve all right so here this was an example to explain what are the flora and fauna and how do we refer them basically in an area if uh, there is a kind of tree present in panchmadi reserve then it will be called as the fauna uh, flora of that area it is not essential that it would won't be found somewhere else for example mango trees are found in panchmadi reserve but mango trees are found in uttar pradesh as well so yes definitely there is a similarity but if we refer to uh, panchmadi biosphere reserve the flora will be counting all these trees all right and fauna will be counting all these animals irrespective of the fact that they are found somewhere else as well all right so this uh, was flora and fauna now there is an activity for you very interesting activity try to identify the flora and fauna of your area and list them you can use google as well Uh, so try to list the flora and fauna present in your area all right endemic species students in this topic we will be discussing these endemic species and we have to understand what these are so let us start and we will be talking about both animals and plants all right so students let us first of all understand what is a species species is a group of population which are capable of interbreeding basically they can reproduce the same kind of organism right basically you can take the example of simple breed of dog if you have a bulldog then the bulldog is capable of producing the next generation of bulldog and this is a species the species is not only a kind of animal it is the uh, basically species are Uh, i can explain it in this way that there are so many kinds of fishes fish around us right lakhs of species of fish have been found lakhs of microorganisms so many animals so many kinds of insects all these are different species and they produce uh, the same offspring as well so species is a group of population which are capable of interbreeding they interbreed and they reproduce new so basically you can understand that a peacock and a dog cannot breed to produce an offspring right the breeding can only be possible between a dog and a dog and a peacock and another peacock right so there is uh, the process basically of interbreeding is only possible when the species is same right so species is a group of population which are capable of interbreeding now endemic species are those species of plants and animals which are found exclusively in a particular area right till now we talked about flora and fauna which were the kinds of plants and animals present in an area here we are talking about the endemic species and what are these species these are the species of plants and animals which are found exclusively in a particular area we are now talking about even more detail we are talking about species now right they are not naturally found anywhere else in flora and fauna as i told you that mango can still be found in another state but these species will not be found in another area species has to be the same if the uh, kind of uh, dog present in panchmadi reserve is a particular species it won't be found in uttar pradesh they are not naturally found anywhere else all right because they have grown they have evolved into that area due to certain conditions such as weather such as nature present around them they have evolved under certain conditions which are only present in that particular area so that is why they are not naturally found anywhere else all right so a particular type of animal or plant may be endemic to a zone a state or a country 
right so this these kind of animals can only be found either in a zone or in a state or even in a country basically uh, there are certain animals which are found only in india and not anywhere else naturally so those are endemic to india only right those species are endemic to india they cannot be found anywhere else people if you if they want uh, to get them they will be uh, taken away from india but they cannot be naturally found anywhere else all right now let us take some examples sal and wild mango are two examples of endemic flora of the panchmani bio reserve these two are endemic to panchmani biosphere reserve basically you can find normal mango somewhere else but this kind of mango that is wild mango will only be found in biosphere reserve which is panchmani biosphere reserve then coming to bison indian giant squirrel and flying squirrel are endemic fauna of this area all right as you can see in this picture this is a giant squirrel it is naturally found in bi panchmani bio reserve only and nowhere else in the whole country so these are endemic to that area they cannot be found anywhere else so i hope you have understood the concept we are not talking about the whole class of animals we are talking about a single animal and also one one of its kind right basically if we talk about squirrels uh, let us say there are 10 kinds of squirrels right so this one kind which is giant squirrel indian giant squirrel is endemic to panchmani biosphere reserve only it cannot be found anywhere else in the world this single type other nine types are present all around the world right but this single type will only be naturally present in uh, panchmani biosphere reserve all right this tree is the wild mango tree and it is only found in panchmani biosphere reserve because it is endemic to that area all right so these were the endemic species now i have heard that some of the endemic species may vanish is it true now students as i told you that endemic species may be endemic to a zone to a state or to a country so let us say that there is an animal there is an animal endemic to your zone right and the government decides to uh, construct a nuclear power plant in your area so the vegetation the forest present around your area will be acquired under under this nuclear power plant right so there is no habitat present for the uh, flora and fauna of that area so obviously if there is no home then these particular species will not be able to flourish and ultimately they may vanish they may get extinct so yes these endemic species can also vanish someday due to our activities wildlife sanctuaries students so till now we have already studied about biosphere reserves and now in this lecture we will be discussing about wildlife sanctuaries right so students the wildlife sanctuaries are used to increase the population of animals which are on the verge of extinction students basically by the words of extinction we mean that they will start that they will stop existing we will not be able to find any more of that kind of animals right so to increase the population of animals which are on the verge of extinction we use wildlife sanctuaries all right this is the main motive that if any species is on the verge of extinction then we will be using wildlife sanctuaries to increase their population all right students activities like harvesting of timber collection of minor forest products is allowed in this area basically in these areas two activities are allowed and these activities are harvesting of timber basically timber is a tree which is utilized in many purposes so timber can be harvested and minor forest products which can be small plants which are useful in medicine these minor products can be uh, collected right only two activities are allowed 
Now there is a list in front of you telling about the important sanctuaries in India. So the name of sanctuary is Bharatpur which is in Rajasthan, Kaziranga in Assam, Sultanpur in Haryana, Bandipur in Karnataka, Periyar in Kerala. Right? These are some five important wildlife sanctuaries present in India. You must remember these names because they are very important for our existence as well and for the balance of nature. And with the help of these, we basically try to increase the population of animals which are on the verge of extinction. Right? So students, let us move on to the next page. These are the areas which provide protection. First of all, they provide protection because we are trying to increase the population. Right? So if we need them to increase, we need to give them some suitable environment, suitable living conditions and proper protection so that nothing disturbs them. Nobody is able to kill them or hunt them. So we provide protection and suitable living conditions to the wild animals. Alright? So poaching which is basically hunting or capturing of animals is strictly prohibited in these areas because obviously we are trying to increase their population. We cannot allow hunting or capturing of animals in those areas. So these activities are prohibited. As we have already discussed, they are used to increase the population of animals which are on the verge of extinction. Right? Now students, wildlife sanctuaries like reserve forests, reserve forests are those earmarked areas which are basically used for the protection of forests. Provide protection and suitable living conditions to the wild animals, right? People living in wildlife sanctuaries are allowed to do certain activities. People which are allowed, which are living in that area, they are allowed some activities and these activities are, firstly we have discussed timber harvesting, right? Timber harvesting is, uh, we have already discussed, timber harvesting is allowed and secondly, collection of minor forest products. Right? These we have already discussed that these are allowed. So students, activities such as grazing by livestock, for example, if they have cows or buffaloes, then for their food, grazing is allowed. Grazing is basically when we take our animals to a field and they eat the plants present there. So grazing is allowed in these areas and collecting medicinal plants and firewood. These three activities are allowed for the people living in the wildlife sanctuaries, not for outsiders. Outsiders are not at all allowed. Then it's a pity that even protected forests are not safe because people in living in the neighborhood enroach upon them and destroy them. So this is the current problem that even in wildlife sanctuaries and protected forests, it is very difficult to keep them safe because people living in the neighborhood enroach upon them and destroy them. Right? Now students, International Union of Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources which is IUCN now known as World Conservation Union, WCO, it is the new name of IUCN, the new name of IUCN is or WCO which is World Conservation Union keeps the record of all the threatened species of the world. We will be discussing what these threatened species are. What is threatened species basically? We will be discussing that in this lecture only. This WCO keeps the record of all the endangered species. World Conservation Union, uh, WCU. Alright? Then IUCN categorized the species into nine categories on the basis of the size of population, rate of declining population, their geographical, geographical uh, distribution, etc. So basically, there are nine categories based on certain criterion, uh, certain criteria which are such as size of population, rate of declining population. For example, you can take two animals, right? Tigers and pigs and dogs. Take three uh, examples. Now at some point, tiger population was 50 in a wildlife sanctuary. Pigs were 150 
and dogs were 200 now after some time after like 2 to 3 years you notice that tigers have decreased to 30 pigs are 160 and dogs are 210 so now you can see that the size of population of tigers is very small right while pigs and dogs are in enough amount but as you notice after some time there is a major decrease in the population of tigers but the pigs have increased and dogs have increased so this is how these are some uh, this was a rough data that i just uh, wrote by myself but this is just an example that in this case pigs and dogs do not need protection right tigers need protection and they need to be conserved even though tigers are more uh, powerful and dangerous animals but still they are decreasing so we need to protect them so this is some criteria such as size of population rate of declining population and their geographical distribution this is how wcu categorize these species into nine categories all right now let us look into threatened animals there are four pictures in front of you right all the four are endangered threatened sorry threatened animals let us see what threatened animals are we will be looking into examples as well so some species of plants and animals have greatly reduced in number in their natural habitat basically even even after remaining in their natural habitat their population has decreased their number has greatly reduced they are either at the edge of extinction or likely to become extinct such species are called as threatened species the species which are on the verge of extinction or likely to become extinct are known as threatened species and they their number is decreasing greatly even when they are living in their natural habitat the threat might be due to habitat destruction First of all, this habitat destruction takes place due to deforestation or other human activities. Right? Basically, many human activities such as poaching, hunting and deforestation due to industrialization, houses, furniture. All these activities are decreasing their living area, their habitat. So, first of all, the first reason being habitat destruction. Right? Then comes second, non-availability of food, right, non-availability of food, there is no food available for them, for example, there is a tiger, now a tiger eats animals such as deers, if deers are not present in good amount, so this tiger will also not exist, right, this is a food chain process, so basically, Threat can also be there due to non-availability of food or excessive use of species. These species may be excessively used due to human products such as for leather. Many animals are killed throughout the year, right? So we should not use leather because it is very cruel to the animals. So this is, these are some reasons. First being habitat destruction, second being non-availability of food and third being excessive use of species all right so this is how threatened species become threatened right now coming to endangered species this is the second kind of species which has been uh, this category has also been created by uh, wcu world conservation union so these are the species which are in danger of extinction in near future basically threatened are those that we do not know if that if they will stop existing in the coming uh, future but about endangered species it is definite that in coming future in the near future they will be extinct they are in the danger of extinction in the near future if unfavorable factors for these are allowed to continue they would become extinct so these are species that are definite to become extinct if we do not provide them favorable conditions for example asiatic lion blue whale Great Indian Buster. These are two examples of species which are endangered and they might not exist in the near future. Asiatic lion, as you can look in this picture, this is Asiatic lion. 
it has a different kind of fur near his neck right then coming to the second example which is great indian bustard this is again a bird which will stop existing if we do not provide it the necessary favorable conditions now that the difference between endangered and threatened is that threatened species their number is decreasing greatly due to the destruction of habitat unavailability of food or due to excessive use of that species they are not uh, to be extinct in the near future they will not be extinct in the near future but endangered species will definitely become extinct if we do not provide them un uh, favorable conditions so for them to exist we need to provide them with favorable conditions coming to the third one it is vulnerable species what are vulnerable species these are the species which are likely to become endangered in the presence of the causative factors for example basically causative factors are again human activities right human activities are causative factors then these species will likely become endangered in the presence of causative factors for example black buck right golden langur and chinkara deer chinkara deer they are, these are all somehow different from the normal kinds of them right so these are some vulnerable species which are likely to become endangered in the presence of causative factors they are likely but not in uh, not extinct they will not become extinct they will become endangered first and then extinct so firstly comes vulnerable then comes threatened no firstly threatened then vulnerable then endangered and then comes extinct this is the kind of danger that falls in front of them firstly they are threatened then they become vulnerable then they become endangered and then they become extinct right next is rare species rare species are those species which are existing but very low in number they are existing but they are very low in number naturally they are found uh, very rarely it is not due to any of the factors but they do not produce more right for example golden cat monk seal and indian pied hornbill it is a bird gestless himalayan porcupine this is a tree right so these are some species which are rare which are not found very much they are already in very low number coming to the last one which is extinct species these are the species of plants and animals which have been lost forever due to excessive causative factors because we could not provide them with proper habitat proper food proper protection they have been lost forever a species once lost cannot be retrieved that is why we are protecting all the threatened endangered and vulnerable species because once they become extinct we will not be able to retrieve them examples are siberian tiger indian cheetah golden eagle brahma kamal this was a flower right then sarp gandha which is again a flower all these species have been lost due to excessive causative factors and we could not protect them right some of the threatened uh, wild animals like black buck white eyed buck elephant golden cat this is also a rare species pink headed duck ghadiyal marsh crocodile python rhinoceros etc are protected and preserved in our wildlife sanctuary so basically we are putting our efforts in protecting these threatened animals these are wild animals which are being protected by uh, keeping them in wildlife sanctuaries and we are trying to increase increase their population indian sanctuaries have unique landscapes broad level forests mountain forests bushlands in deltas of big rivers 
So we have situated our wildlife sanctuaries in such areas where there is broad level of forests, mountain forests, bushlands so that they can easily graze and deltas of big rivers so that they are they never lack the water so they have enough food and water for their existence and to increase their population all right now students what is the difference between a zoo and a wildlife sanctuary there are many differences firstly in a zoo if you keep an elephant in a zoo elephant is a huge animal right it is very large if we keep it in a zoo it is a very small area for an animal very small area for an elephant so in the zoo there is more uh, probability of an elephant dying rather in a forest because in the forests there is a very large area so many kilometers of area in which he can wander and which he can eat and in a zoo basically the elephant is provided with a fixed diet right which can which we cannot tell if it is enough for him or not but in a forest he can look for his food for himself he is a free creature right the elephant is a free creature imagine for yourself if you are told to stay in a room for your whole life obviously you will not be happy there right it will not be a good condition to live so for animals it is better to keep them in wildlife sanctuaries and not in a zoo because animals are not basically to be caged they should be allowed allowed to live their life by themselves and they should be uh, left in forests so then they can lead their life like they want to not in a zoo where they are caged right so there is a lot of difference in a zoo and in a wildlife sanctuary all right